Over the past couple of years on my channel, I've talked a lot about how the traditional book publishing industry is changing and evolving. We've seen mergers and attempted mergers between major publishing houses. We've seen rounds of layoffs. We've seen a strike for higher wages and diversity initiatives. And of course, throughout it all, we've seen books continue to get published. Now, a couple of weeks ago, some news broke in the industry related to the biggest publishing house in the US and my former employer, Penguin Random House. So today I wanna to talk about what's going on with Penguin Random House and help you interpret the news as well as how people in the industry and outside of the industry are responding both positively and negatively to it. Ultimately, my goal is to help you understand how the book publishing industry really is possibly changing forever, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. So let's talk about it. Now, if you are at all interested in the book publishing industry, particularly the traditional publishing side, I recommend subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Every week, I either talk about the publishing industry like this video, or I give tactical writing tips, especially geared toward people who are working on a book. So I'd love to have you join this incredible community. Before we get started, if you could just hit that thumbs up button for me, it really does help out my channel. Thank you so much. So I wanna to begin today by giving an overview of what this news is and what's going on within Penguin Random House as a company. As I mentioned, Penguin Random House was my former employer. I was on the editorial team at Ballantine Books, which is a division of the Random House division. So I've been following this news very closely and I've been closely watching how my content in the industry have been responding to everything. Now, some backstory. Penguin Random House had quite a rocky last year. The attempted merger where Penguin Random House was attempting to buy Simon & Schuster did not go through. It was blocked by the Department of Justice in a very high profile trial that was closely watched by everyone in the book industry and even people outside of the industry. I have a whole other video that goes into the merger, what happened, what the arguments on both sides were. So check that out if you are not caught up to speed on what happened with that. Now, in the fallout of this merger being blocked, several of the top executives at Penguin Random House resigned, most notably the CEO and the head of the US division. So this caused a huge shift in leadership at the executive level already. So skipping ahead to today, book publishers in the past few quarters have been seeing a bit of a slump in sales. Now book sales spiked a ton during the pandemic. We saw record sales at most, if not all of the big five houses. So to some degree, this slump is kind of the aftermath of so many people buying books in 2020. But combined with this slump in sales, like most other industries, book publishers are facing rising costs and of course, battling inflation. And when we're talking about producing a book that requires a lot of physical goods, and those are just more expensive now and harder to get. So like most companies operating in today's landscape, book publishers have been forced to find ways to cut costs. About two weeks ago, the news broke that Penguin Random House was going through a series of buyouts for their more legacy employees and straight layoffs as well. Allegedly, employees who were over the age of 60 and who had been with the company for more than 15 years were eligible for a buyout package that was offered. In addition to the buyout offers, there were around 60 employees who were outright laid off. And that goes across multiple departments. What made this news hit the industry so hard is that several of the employees who were either offered buyouts or who were laid off were the editors of very preeminent, high profile authors. And these editors had a very strong and great reputation in the industry. They were responsible for some of the most iconic books of the decades past. This includes several high profile editors at the prestigious literary fiction imprint Knopf, including Joan Didion's editor and Joyce Carol Oates editor. Several news outlets reported on these buyouts and layoffs and they called it kind of a changing of the guard in Penguin Random House, which again is the publisher of some of the biggest books in the entire world. So how are people inside and outside the industry reacting to this news? Before we get into that, I want to let you know about a free resource I created for my YouTube community called my Story Self-Assessment Worksheet. It's a fun, easy way to take another look at your work in progress and see it from a more objective perspective, which I know is so hard to do. If you have a story and you're feeling stuck, 
you know you can improve things, but you just don't know what those are, this worksheet is for you. The link to download it is in the description and downloading it is going to sign you up for my newsletter, Chapter Break, where I give exclusive writing and publishing insights from some of the industry's leading insiders. So you don't wanna miss out on all of that. If you wanna go straight to the newsletter, the link is also in the description. Let's start with the pessimistic view of this news. Anytime we talk about layoffs or positions being eliminated, people tend to focus on the negative, right? How is that a good thing? And some people even take the news of layoffs in the publishing industry as a sign that traditional publishers are on their way out, the industry is barely hanging on, and self-publishing or alternative publishing models are going to take over. Now, those opinions might be totally valid. Maybe that is how this all plays out. Time, of course, will tell if traditional publishers are able to evolve to the contemporary publishing landscape or not, and if they're gonna be able to survive in this new economic landscape as well, right? I have another video that goes into my view on if traditional publishing is dead, so check that out if this conversation interests you. Now, this particular changing of the guard type scenario that we're discussing with Penguin Random House specifically laying off very prominent, high-profile, veteran employees struck the book community in a bit of a different way than just layoffs in general. Some fear that the loss of this prominent and revered talent in the industry is going to have a lasting negative effect on the quality of books that get published. Many industry veterans who came up or worked with these prominent editors and other employees in their same peer group have also been lamenting kind of the loss of the publishing of yesteryear. This is typically referring to a specific era in the 90s where preeminent editors were known for having long, expensive lunches with really high-profile agents and best-selling authors. They would travel internationally and attend glamorous book industry events. And in some cases, the editors were just as famous as their authors. That's not really how the publishing industry looks today. And some people who experienced that kind of heyday for publishing, so to speak, see the buyouts and layoffs as representing that the publishing industry has totally moved away from that and is almost past its prime. Now I wanna talk about the optimistic outlook that some people are taking. Other people in the industry, particularly who are younger in their careers at big five publishing houses, see this shift as an opportunity, specifically for them to prove themselves and have their voices heard and make positive change in the industry. An industry that is very slow to adopt new techniques and technology, and frankly, different mindsets. Within the publishing house setting as an employee, it is extremely hard to work your way up the ranks. And this is doubly hard in the editorial division, especially. That's because it's an industry where people at the top tend to stay at the top for a very long time and not really leave their positions. This is personally one of the reasons why I left the industry because I saw a future in which I would have to grind away at a low level role for likely decades. So. Simply, many top editor positions haven't really been open or vacant until now. So if Penguin Random House does decide to fill some of the positions that have now been left vacant, it could create opportunity to have some new faces in those roles in the higher ranks of the publishing industry. It's also important to note that historically, employees at publishing houses, especially people in higher level roles, tend to be upper class and white, but the new generation of publishing is the most diverse that it's ever been. So we could see a publishing industry that looks very different and is now populated by a much more diverse set of employees. Since these are the people deciding what stories are going to be put on the shelves, it does become important that they're representative of the world that we live in, right? So that's why some people have the view that, yes, it is upsetting that the company has to make these cuts, but at the same time, maybe there is opportunity down the line and maybe it's not such a bad thing that the publishing industry is changing forever. I hope this video helped you better understand the nuances of what's going on in the book publishing world. I know it is a very opaque industry, so I try to do everything I can to bring you these insights and these interpretations so you can understand it better, especially if you're trying to break into it. Let me know in the comments what you think this changing of the guard means for the publishing industry. Do you think it's a positive or a negative? And if you're looking for some more insight into shakeups in the industry in recent years, I have another video that goes into some more background on all of that. Before you head out, please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help out my channel. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. 
And don't forget your free story self-assessment resource and my newsletter link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.